Isha Grayson, founder and CEO of The Art of Applying here with one of what I know is going to be one of our most watched video testimonials ever. Uh, another rock star client, our client Brianna is here. And Brianna, why is your video, I know you're going to be humble, but just answer my question. Why is your video going to be one of our most watched videos ever? What is the great news that we are celebrating today? Well, the great news that I just found out this week is I have been admitted to my dream program at the Stanford School of Education, and I found out I am a Knight Hennessy Scholar for 2020, which is just outstanding, outstanding that news. <laughs> so exciting. Congratulations. So for those people who, most people who are watching this video have found the video because they were Googling Knight Hennessy Scholarship. So they're, yeah. now that they've just heard what you said, they're super excited. But yeah. for the few people who don't know what the scholarship is, tell us what the Knight Hennessy Scholarship is. Yeah. So the Knight Hennessy Scholarship is a, uh, is a fellow scholarship program that was recently endowed by John Knight and, or uh, Phil Knight and John Hennessy at the Stanford School. Um, it's a fully funded fellowship. It's a leadership program specifically designed for early stage leaders to basically change the world in whatever way they want to change the world. Um, and the amazing part is that it allows you to be fully funded um, through for three years up to your graduate experience. So it's an amazing rock star community of passionate scholars, leaders um, from around the world. And it's just an amazing way to kind of kickstart your career as you get into graduate school with a whole community of uh, amazing people and additional resources for your work. Oh, how exciting. First of all, it's already a dream. Yeah. It's already a dream to get admitted to Stanford for any degree. Yeah. But, but then to be admitted with a full scholarship. Yeah. That covers, it's, and your program's not even three years, so you could get a joint degree. I could. It's actually something I'm looking into because... Do it. I, I mean... I was in a place last year where I had just taken the Jerry for the first time and I was like, Oh no, what do I do next? Like, I don't know. I, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to get in? I'm a first generation college student. So just like the next step of anxiety. And so to be in a place a year later where I don't have to worry about graduate student loans at all, like at all, at all. Like I don't even have to worry about the lost income that I'm going to have from not working and supporting my grandmother. Like it's life changing. Like it is. Wait, it's let's pause. Tell me what that means. So they, so tuition is covered. Mm -hmm. What else? So there's an additional stipend to cover living costs. And so basically it's helping you know, supplement the fact that I don't have to take out loans just to live at Stanford. And that's huge. I mean, it's just going to be a huge burden off of me and my family as I, you know, am trying to take care of others in my family as well after I get out of graduate school. So yes, oh, this is so exciting. And we're going to get into your story because I remember. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna Oh, this is so exciting. So um, now, everyone who's watching this video is like, wow, this happened for her. Can this happen for me? So a lot of times people want to know as much um, information about you, like stats-wise, that you're willing to share, yeah. as specifically as you're willing to share it. The kind of things they like to know is um, age, race, where you went to college, um, what your GPA is, what your GRE score is, how many years did you work, just, you know, all the stuff yeah. so they can say, okay, I'm like that, maybe this could happen for me if yeah. I get help. Yeah, so I'm 27, I've been working um, for about uh, five years, which is the maximum to become a Knight Hennessy Scholar, you have to enroll within five years of your undergraduate program. I graduated in 2015 from UC Berkeley, um, where I was a first generation college student. I'm a white queer female, but um, you know, I had a GPA that 
in my mind, totally disqualified me. I graduated with a 3.3 and I had a lot of classes that I had to retake or didn't do well in um, because I was a really involved campus leader. Um, and I had a lot of other things going on, mental health concerns that I wanted um, to try and tell my story about in my application. And so, you know, my GRE scores were good, but not great. And I think that it was my story and my ability and, you know, my consultants help in crafting my story that really helped me break through because I think that I, I seriously thought that my GPA was too low to get into a top tier graduate school. And I was wrong, gratefully. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. I still remember. So, you know what? I think, um, I think I was your breakthrough coach. Yeah, yeah. We had a call together in the yeah. first, like, week. Yeah. Um, or something, because I know your story really well, better than most clients' stories. And so, um, wow, a 3.3 GPA. Yeah. And you were, you were worried about getting in somewhere. Yeah. And to get into your dream school with a full scholarship. Oh, I'm so excited. And the thing is, is that, I think I was so anxious about stats, like numbers and the game. And I just remember, I don't, I'm sure it's something you've said in a video that I had watched or maybe on one of your blog posts, but it's like, you get past a point that like in my interview with Knight Hennessy, in my interview for my graduate school program, no one asked about my GPA. No one asked about my GRE scores. They asked me what my vision was, what my plan was, like what I wanted to do and what my story was. And you know, the art of applying helps me craft that and focus on my strengths rather than my weaknesses. Cause I could have yes. spent so much more time focusing on all of my weak spots on my application, but really I just tried to focus on, you know, owning my story and owning what I knew I could do well. And that was what I, made me feel so much more confident in the process. Mm -hmm. Oh man, my heart is bursting with happiness and joy. So, oh, okay, where to begin? Let's talk about how you found the art of applying and what motivated you to book a breakthrough call and what did you think it was going to be like? So I, I had definitely read some of your blog posts and I think I was literally, at the time, I was still trying to figure out if I wanted to do like an MPP or, or an, a master's of arts uh, in educa master's of education. And it was like all up on the HKS, you know, at Harvard Kennedy school, like blogs. And that's where your blog came through. And it was like, well, I was like, what GRE scores, you know, are the average HKS graduate or whatever. And I remember thinking and reading and I was just like, oh, numbers are so difficult to like know the person behind the story and really know what's going on. And so when I booked my breakthrough call, I just, I remember looking at your website and reading your story and was like, wow, I really want to work with somebody who can help me navigate this next stage of the process because I realized that I had done everything I knew how to do. I studied super hard and self-taught myself for the GRE. But after that, I remember like just being stumped because I was like, I don't know what the next step is. I'm not prepared. I'm a first generation undergrad college student. I don't even know how to apply to a top 10 graduate school program. And so I knew that there were tricks and I knew there were people who understood the process, but I didn't know those people. And so reading your website and reading your blogs, I was like, okay, I want to work with somebody who understands what my story is like and what I'm bringing to the table and the strengths that I have. And so I think that's when I worked with one of the breakthrough calls. And then I think I had a call with you. So it was just kind of, I don't know. I really liked your energy mostly like your energy and your personality and kind of your belief in your clients and the fact that it, it isn't all a numbers game. You really saw like the whole person behind the, yes. you know, the, that's trying to apply to graduate school. That felt really different for me because, you know, I had a story that I needed to tell and it was sometimes painful to tell that, but yes. feeling like I had somebody in my corner to help me navigate that as like, almost like a mentor <laughs> in addition to like sure. consultant. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm so glad you found us. Yeah. Google. Yeah. Thank you, Google. Thank you. <laughs> um, wonderful. So um, the next thing we're going to talk about is what it 
felt like to hear the tuition for the program and to pay the tuition. Yeah, it was scary. I mean, I have to. I'm having a oh no 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 <laughs> issue. <laughs> The next thing that I want to talk about is the experience of on the breakthrough call, your breakthrough coach is like, we feel 100% confident we can help you. Mm -hmm. um, this is how the program works. We want to invite you into the application accelerator. We really think we can help you. Mm -hmm. And this is the tuition. And as you know, we don't like talk about the tuition ahead of time. So you weren't exactly sure what to expect, but just how did it feel making such a big investment in yourself? It was scary at first. I think that because I had never really engaged with this kind of service before, I didn't know how much the value would mean for me. But ultimately, it clicked when I think I'd watched your interview with Shatem. And you said something like, this is buying the social capital that other people just have access to by the nature of their class or their parents education background or their professional status and when you said it that way I was just like I have to do this because I know that I'm competing against people whose parents have been to Harvard and been to all these programs and you know that's not where I come from and that's not my experience but I know that I have the talent to get into these programs and I know I can compete with these students I just need to figure out what the process is like and I also know that for me, it was really about investment in my mental health in this process. I had seen a lot of my friends go through the graduate application process. And by the time they got in, they were so stressed out and so frustrated and they felt so alone in the process that um, I just kind of viewed it as an investment in having somebody by my side through the process whether or not I got into my dream program or not, that it, I was going to be in a better mental health place at the end, which was 100% true. Because, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I turned to my partner and said, I'm really not stressed. And I just submitted my application to Stanford. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that, that, you know, the, like, the mindset coach and your consultant and just the, the, the in-depth process, but I'm not going to lie. I mean, I had to do some creative finances to figure out like how I was going to figure it out. And it was scary for me and my family around me because that's a, it was, it was a severe, it was a large investment, but yeah. I knew, and I mean, it has paid off 13 times over. <laughs> 13 times over. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's just in like in explicit cost, not even what my lifetime, what oh, my life and the change that this is going to bring to my life. So of it's, course. and I have, I mean, no doubt in my mind, Kanisha, like I would not be a Knight Hennessy scholar right now if it weren't for the art of applying. Like it just wouldn't have happened because not because I couldn't do it, but because I didn't know how to tell my story. I mean, like, yeah. I still feel like I got to be authentically myself throughout the process. I didn't say anything that wasn't true. I didn't, you know, have to tell a story about myself or what I wanted to do that wasn't 100% mm -hmm. genuine, but my relationship and the resources that you, my relationship with my consultant and the relationships that the art of applying provide just helped bring me so much clarity in how I wanted to tell my story. Yes. Oh, so beautiful, Brianna. And um, one of the things you mentioned was your friends who applied to graduate school, they were so isolated. It sounds like they made it to the finish line, but they were just kind of crawling, you know, yeah. to the finish line. And I would just love to hear about what, what your experience was like. It sounds like you made some nice relationships. You worked with the mindset coach, your consultant. I don't yeah. know if you interacted with any of the other clients in the program. Yeah. So to help everyone understand um, what makes, what, how your experience being in the application accelerator was different than your friends who maybe applied yeah. on their own or even applied, paid another company, but just worked only yeah. on a home with a consultant. Well, I mean, I study education and pedagogy, so I was super thrilled with the idea of it being like a, there was a peer community for me to be a part of. Um, and so one of the best things I think was 
being with the other clients and interacting with them, whether it be on calls or, you know, um, coaching calls or writing calls or whatever call I was participating in because everybody came from different places and they were, we were all applying to different programs. I don't actually think I was applying to a single program with other folks in the mm -hmm. cohort because they were all applying to MBA and, and law programs. But the fact that I got to see the journey that they were on and then learn from it and then they could learn from our journey and even just seeing the way that they were writing and editing helped me in my creative process because I didn't feel like there was nothing to go off of. I suddenly had like a huge insight into how people's thought process was. Um, so that for me was huge just because I think that seeing the other amazing clients, I think you have really high caliber clients, I will say. Yes. I don't know how you kind of They're cultivate that, <laughs> but the clients that you work with have amazing stories. And so just getting the chance to meet and hear about their work and their um, passion and what is bringing them to graduate school was really inspiring. Um, it definitely, I think, pushed me to be more excellent and more on top of it. I think it's also kind of like, you know, you get, you need like a running group to keep accountable. Yes. And so like the accountability of kind of like, on the GRE calls and on the writing calls, like seeing people's essays, like get better and better. And it's like, Ooh, mine need to get better too. Like I need to work on this and, and edit this and, and that feeling of community. And then when people get in, you know, six, like celebrating people's successes together yes. and seeing where everybody goes is just really awesome. It just makes you feel so not lonely. <laughs> That's right. So not lonely. I love yeah. that. And for people watching and wondering like, what are all these calls? Mm -hmm. um, just to do a little mini explanation in the application accelerator, you do have a one-on-one -on -one consultant that's by your side for the whole process. Mm -hmm. So Brianna did have someone with a Harvard graduate school of education degree, um, working one-on-one -on -one with her the entire, entire process. So many, 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 many months. Mm -hmm. um, Brianna, do you remember when you signed up? What, around what I month? signed up in May. So I signed up in May. And then I think I started, I was in the incubator phase and then moved into the accelerator phase, yeah. which for me was perfect because I'm somebody who responds really well to structure and I knew that I needed a structured program. So the incubator phase was good for me to like prepare and just watch and learn and get yeah. kind of my, there's so much, I don't think people realize how much thinking there just is when you're applying to grad school. Like it's not all writing and it's not all GRE prep and it's not all interviewing. Like you need to spend three to four times just thinking about like, this is the essay question how am I going to approach it? How am I going to do that? And I mean, between like my first call with my consultant, I, the first thing we worked on was my night Hennessy application. And I think we went through 10 drafts of that. Yeah. And then after those drafts, it was like, okay, I get it now. And like, it became yeah. so much more easier. I realized that I was building a skill more than just getting a service. Like it was, I, you all work teaching me and coaching me how to do this properly. That's exactly right. And that's exactly why we actually have shifted our language to calling the money that we ask our clients to pay us. We call it tuition because yeah. we're like, we're running a school here. School, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, not only is it just a school, like I feel so confident that like I could apply to my PhD program. I could get funding for my PhD program. I can get other fellowships and other scholarships because like the skills that I gained from working with my consultant, working with my writing coach, working with you, like those skills are so applicable to, I've edited like friends of mine resumes now with the yeah. same like, you know, thought process and skills mm -hmm. that I've learned from, you know, the amazing resume, you know, editor that you have. And like, just that knowledge is so valuable that it's like, it is definitely skill. You're definitely running a school because yeah. it's, it's so, it's now a skill in me that's going to be there forever. Like I'm into graduate school, but that value is going to be carried with me for a long time. Oh, I'm so happy. Yes. So that, yeah, we're running a school and yeah. um, my little side note is you know, growing up, and I think you'll appreciate this, especially coming from education, the only thing I ever wanted to be was a teacher and yeah. a writer and on the Disney Channel, you know? <laughs> yeah. I teach, I write, and I make YouTube videos. So that's, yeah, You're pretty close. Yeah, and so yeah, we're running a school, and so we call it tuition, you know, what we ask our clients to pay us to help them get their result. 
But um, the calls that Brianna is referring to is we, um, I actually, it also reminds me a little bit of like a gym where we've got classes mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. um, all week. So we have a weekly Q&A call where you can come and ask any question you yeah. want. Uh, currently run by a former client yeah. um, who we sent to Harvard Kennedy School and Dartmouth Tuck for a joint degree. He, he graduated, works at Bridgespan, now works for the Art of Applying on the side. So he runs our weekly Q&A. Um, then we have a weekly writing center call, which is run by a woman who used to work in the writing center at Tufts University that I recruited onto the Art of Applying team. Um, and then we also have a weekly test prep power hour call run by an extremely experienced test prep tutor who also has an MBA and an MFA in screenwriting. And he's a, he's a filmmaker. It's just like the team is amazing. The clients are amazing. Yeah. The community is amazing. And you guys are amazing before. It's not like we make you great. You know, you guys come in great with usually some sort of like fatal flaw or some, mm -hmm. just some sort of um, serious developmental area. Um, and then we work together to make that developmental area either a non-issue or actually a strength, right? Yeah. My GPA is low because I was supporting my grandma or working a full-time yeah. job or super involved in advocacy work. So something yeah. that actually looks like a weakness actually then becomes a strength. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing that really just... I, I think after I did my breakthrough call, I was like, oh, I should maybe do some due diligence and like look at other consulting companies because I really hadn't. And then I looked at everybody else and was like, Ugh. I was like, these people, which I'm sure works for some, but like they didn't, I don't think understand what I was coming to the table with. And maybe that, you know, the weakness that I had, I think the term you've used before is like wounded warrior. And wounded I warrior. really, I like that term a lot because it's like, I think that some of the most amazing people are people who have had something maybe not go perfectly in their experience. And I think for a lot of these schools, they want to see that introspection and that mm -hmm. reflection point and that growth and maturity. And the ability that the consultants, the, you know, my consultant particularly to talk with me and understand my story, I just felt so connected with her and she believed in me. Like she really believed in me. And that kept me like to the night before my interview, she was practicing with me and she was like, you're going to kill this. Like, I just know it. You're going to be great. And that relationship means the world when you our first gen and trying to figure this out on your own and scraping together the money to invest in this or, you know, figure out graduate school at all, like not having to um, feel like you're bothering anybody that these, you know, that, you know, this community is actually here for you and, and really does believe in you and want you to succeed because the mental taxing process of going and trying to make yourself vulnerable and, and explain your life story and explain what you want to do and explain some, maybe some things that didn't go perfectly in your undergraduate experience or before mm -hmm. is, is difficult. And so having that community of people is just, it's amazing. So. Oh, I'm so just so happy. Uh, you mentioned our mindset coach. So we have, uh, currently have two the reason why I keep saying the word currently is because things change a lot yeah. so we, the team's always growing but we currently have two in-house mindset coaches uh, which one did you work with uh, well actually let's not say their name just in yeah. case things change but for the one that you worked with what yeah. resonated with you about working with her um, what kind of things did y'all work on and help everyone watching understand what the heck is a mindset coach and why would I even need that while I'm applying to grad school well, actually, I ended up having a call with both of the ones that are currently on staff because of scheduling issues. So it was amazing because what the mindset coach did for me was help me focus on mentally how I needed to prepare myself for the process and how I was going to spend my energy, my emotional energy in mm -hmm. focusing on the right thing. So, I mean, some of it was structural, just thinking about like, I had a lot of anxiety about writing and editing because mm. I'm dyslexic. And so there, like just some of these things have been difficult for me in my career thus far. Mm. And my mindset coach really helped me reduce my anxiety and focus on a skill and a practice that I could just like a muscle build up and, and think about the work that I was doing in a more like 
productive, like a way to move forward, a way to break through kind of a mental barrier that I put in front of myself in succeeding. And yes. like I said before, I just think people underestimate how much mental work applying to graduate school is and how much you have to be thinking about what your story looks like and what you're trying to convey to people. Because if you're, I worked a lot with my consultant on this and we tag teamed between my, my mindset coach and my consultant thinking about like, what do I want to tell about myself? Like what yeah. is my story? And that has just given me like a confidence in and outside of the graduate school application process because the mindset coach really clarified for me what I needed to do to make myself a great applicant. And, and that just made the whole process so easy. I can't, I can't explain how many times I was like, I really feel like I should be stressed right now. And I'm not <laughs> like, oh, I, right. I was ready to submit all of my applications two weeks beforehand, like before the deadline, they, they were all done. I read them over 150 times. I was just like, am I missing something? No. Okay. Like, and I just, you know, it was just so I, I knew what I needed to do. Even at an open house, I went to the open house for Harvard and I was like, I knew what really good questions I wanted to ask. I knew what I wanted to get out of the time there. I felt like I was so prepared because of, you know, the accelerator and, and what my consultant get, had given me beforehand. So I was like, I felt like I was the most prepared person at the open house because I assure you that you were. And because yeah. I don't, I don't know what it's like when clients work with other admissions consulting companies, because I've never worked with one as a client and then like my clients are with me, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I just, I really feel, I don't know, but I really feel that we have the absolute most comprehensive program, yeah. um, the, the most outstanding results in particular for people who are not, you know, on paper shoe in candidates. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and I, I know for a fact that we are the company that gets, helps our clients get the most money for school just because yeah even talk about it, focus on it, help our clients apply. So I think that was really the unique thing that was like, I knew I was going to get into graduate school somewhere, but mm -hmm. paying for it was like the biggest anxiety point for me. And the fact that working with you was, you know, a year long commitment that I knew I was committing to you, but that you all were committing to me yes. throughout the process. And that getting my acceptance letter was not enough that you all were going to help me fight for more resources, fight for the, the, you know, the funding that I needed to really be able to make graduate school a reality. And that was what gave me ease of mind was not just like, okay, great. This is, there's the application stage, but the way that the art of applying helps you break up like the incubator phase, the accelerator play phase, and then the momentum so that you're really focusing on like what, how to get the most resources from these schools. Cause there's ways you ask for money, ways you negotiate, ways you, yes. you know, you position yourself off the wait list, whatever you need to do so that you can actually take full advantage of the resources that are available. Cause they're going to go to somebody, they could go to somebody else <laughs> or they can go to you. And yes, and, and knowing that the art of applying was in my corner to help me navigate that process because I was completely flying in blind. Luckily, I don't have to do that stage of it because I'm a Knight Hennessy scholar, so I'm fully funded now. But um, if I wasn't, even if I you know, was waiting on my other grad school acceptances and financial aid, like I know, I mean, I literally had messaged you just like weeks ago about like, how do I navigate this with my FAFSA and my taxes? And like, how do I talk to financial aid about this mm -hmm. and this? And like, you were immediately there and other, you know, coaches were immediately there to answer those questions for me so that I could present all the information that I needed to get all the resources that I needed. That's right. That's right. Wow. And wow. So Right now, everyone is seeing on top of the world, Brianna, right? Mm -hmm. You're finished. You finished two weeks early. And I want to say, I just want to do a little side note there that you finished two weeks early because we make you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have all your mm -hmm. stuff to mm -hmm. us, um, I think, a month early. month early. Yep. Right. And so then you have some time to finish. So um, that's why we put those structures in place. Mm -hmm. A lot of clients balk, right? At yeah. the that our internal deadline for you is a month before the deadline, but it gives you then time to 
Yeah. Well, and that's why starting early, I think was so beneficial for me. I mean, I wasn't applying to like an MBA program. So if I, if I was buying round one, it probably would have been late, but I mean, for a graduate school of ed, but because the night Hennessy application is due so early in Mm -hmm. October, like you really have to be ready, ready by like the beginning, the end of August, the beginning of September with your materials. And it just means that you're thinking that much sooner about the, about what you need to have ready. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, um, I was saying, what was I saying? Oh, on top of the world, Brianna. Oh, this is on top of the world, Brianna. But why don't you take us back in time? Because what I don't want is for people, other first generation applicants or other women or other queer students watching this and being like, well, of course, of course she got, look how confident she is, how excited she is. Like that, but that's not how I feel. Um, So take us back to how, how you were feeling when you didn't have help, when you didn't have community, when you thought that that 3.3 meant that you were going to have to fight your way into some school. Yeah. Hopefully some school will take me. And then how am I even going to pay for it? Yeah. I'm going to hear about how grandma was feeling, how yeah. you felt about grandma, you know, just, all, <laughs> just the, I want to hear about the hard feelings so that they can understand that you really were once in their shoes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that, I mean, I literally remember a year ago, like my partner and I like walking around me just being like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Like, I'm going to have to like get, a, you know, a, a, a job at, you know, serving somewhere so I can make the extra money so I can save for graduate school mm-hmm. so I can, you know, I'm gonna have to work two jobs and like, do all this, uh, you know, additional because I just I had to go to graduate school, but I, I really didn't know if I was going to be able to afford it. And mm-hmm. It was, I mean, I still have undergraduate student loans. I helped take care of my grandmother financially. And so it, it was so stressful to feel like this is my shot. Like I have to figure out how to navigate this for myself. And, um, you know, I'm, I knew I wasn't the greatest test taker. I knew that my on paper results were going to be like mediocre because of my GPA and, I just knew I needed to take a breath and think smart about my time and think smart about how I was going to take the next step because I could get a second job and try and save up a bunch of money. And then I was like, but I'm not going to have nearly as much time to focus on applying to graduate school. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm going to try and stress myself out by trying to take two jobs and like I work a nine to five. So then working weekends and nights to try and afford this was just starting to feel like squeezing everything. But I also know that it's like, if I didn't figure out how to pay for graduate school, helping support my grandmother afterwards was going to be really difficult because now I'm going to be dealing with graduate student loans and undergraduate student loans and I have a mortgage. Like it's just, it's, it's crazy. (laughs) So I have a lot of responsibility and I felt that really heavy on my shoulders, but I also knew that I had to do this for me and I had to figure out what the best next step would be. And I in a million years didn't think I could get the night Tennessee. I applied because I thought it sounded amazing and that I loved the community and I loved the purpose of the scholarship. And I knew I really wanted to be around other people who want to change the world. You know, I want to change California's K through 12 schools. And I, that's like my life purpose. Like that's why I'm here is to make education a reality for, for every student. But um, I did not think it was possible. And it was only through being the best version of myself through working with the art of applying that that became a reality. And I would venture to say, like, there are so many people who could be Knight Hennessy scholars that could get into Stanford or could get into their first choice, but they have to be ready to do a lot of hard work on their own and, and, and really focus on themselves. And the art of applying helps them frame the work that they need to do and take that next step. Because the other thing is, is that the entire graduate school process is so overwhelming. You have applications and essays and resumes, but breaking it into little chunks and just taking the first step first mm-hmm. is what 
made it all possible. And that's really what working with you and working with the Art of Applying helped me do. Wonderful, wonderful. <clears throat> Brianna, I would like for you to share, if anything, you want to share about like personal adversity or challenges that you've overcome because we do like we can make some assumptions right mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. like not easy right mm -hmm. to be queer in anywhere in the world mm -hmm. um it's not easy to be a woman anywhere in the world but i also know that there are some like big things that you've experienced and overcome so but only whatever like yeah. you would want to share because i just want people to, I just really want people to understand that this can happen for them. Yeah. I, so for me, this is a life changing opportunity because I left my home at 17. My parents dealt with a lot of different struggles and I was on my own and I've been on my own <laughs> for a long time. And I went to school and put myself completely through school by myself, you know, I was a financially independent student. I was working pretty much full time while I was at Berkeley, and um, and I, you know, struggled with a lot of mental health issues because of that. And you know, dug myself out, got this great job when I graduated, but have really like just just kind of squeaked by, <laughs> you know, in a for a long time for a decade plus, at, exactly a decade. I'm 27 now, and. So to be where I'm at today, like literally where kind of like my dreams are coming true. I keep saying, I feel like I won the lottery. You like, did win the lottery. I feel like I won the lottery. You like it's did. crazy. <laughs> um, because my whole life is going to be different after this. And I've been working so hard for this for a really long time. And so it's really, really gratifying to feel like my hard work is starting to pay off and that. I get to do my dream, which is to go back to graduate school for free. <laughs> like I'm going to, I'm going to go to graduate school absolutely for free. And I have worked really, really hard for a long time to make this happen. And so I just, I still kind of woke up and like pinched myself because it, I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world. <laughs> I'm lucky. You're the luckiest person in the world. I love that you're crying in your video. <laughs> you're the luckiest. You're the luckiest person in the world, and you're. It's so well deserved. Thank you. It well, is so well deserved. I literally. I mean, I think probably outside of the first thing that I found out when I said, "Oh my God, I got in," and then I said that was the best money I've ever spent working with the art of applying. So <laughs> it really has been. It's just, I, I feel, I don't know. I just feel like everything can be in going in a right direction now. And, That's and I'm, right. I'm so excited to do the next work. I wish I could start graduate school like next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out how I can start my own 504C and I want to model it a lot like the art of applying. So mm -hmm. I have just really loved working with you and working with every person that you've hired because I don't, I, you know, for me, the other thing that was just really important to me was, was like, if I'm going to spend the money, I want to spend it to somebody who deserves it and you and your company are really important and I think you do really great work so it was um it was well worth it and I feel so lucky and yeah I'm just I'm, I'm like still kind of walking on air <laughs> like walking on air I want you to walk on air the entire the entire rest of the year the entire time at Stanford and just enjoy it and pay it forward yeah. to other people and yeah. You know, obviously would love for you to come back and join the team. If that's something that would be of interest to you, it, it's happening more and more. We just had another client um, join the team this week, a former client. So yeah. um, we sent her to Harvard Kennedy School on a full scholarship and Harvard Law School. So, um, yeah, and I'm just loving how many first generation yeah. um, students we have and one thing I wanted to say is I really think what makes us stand apart, there's so many things that make the art of applying stand apart, but it's just how diverse our team is yeah. and how we really understand. We're not just a bunch of faces that are different colors. It's like, we really understand like intersectionality yeah. and like different identities, right? Like, yeah. you know, 
how vulnerable should you be? Do we yeah. write about dyslexia or focus more on another aspect of your identity? Yeah. Um, and I just it's, think that, it's yeah. that, that's like 360 approach to what your service does that I think is so different because we're complicated people. And when we're trying to portray ourselves on paper in an interview, that's 40 minutes, whatever it is, like you have to be so strategic and that strategy is, is worth a million dollars. Like it's worth, um, it's worth a million dollars because that it's, there's so many unwritten rules of this game and to have you and your staff who understand how to navigate those rules, that unspoken social capital of, class and education that a lot of us are trying to figure out. I mean, for 10,000, oh, for, uh, for uh, the investment it, it is, it's worth it for, you know, you to understand. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. We're, we'll edit it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the tuition is worth it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it happens to me too. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's, and I just love, I love doing these videos. I love, I rewatch them <laughs> <laughs> because it, it feels for me, you know, like, like it's like, it's happening for me. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, yeah, I don't have to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, for me, it's like, I can't wait to go back to school. Like this is my yes. dream. Like this is my dream to go to school and for me to go to school for free at the number one program in the world for my discipline, like is it's a dream come true. And, you know, like what you were saying before about how you understand your client's intersectionality. I mean, to me, like, I believe in like black women magic. So like <laughs> the magic that you and, um, you know, the other staff that have brought to the team are just so, it's so important because I do really think that you're pushing your clients to think about not just themselves in the process, but also what they're going to bring to the graduate school experience mm -hmm. and how they're going to give something to their cohorts and what they're going to do afterwards. Because I think all of us have the responsibility to use the privilege of graduate school to really give back. And, you know, not all of us are necessarily going to go into public service or, you know, um, or, you know, public work, but all of us have a responsibility to think about how we're going to use our graduate school experience to do good for the world and do, do good public work. And so I think that w your team and the cohort of people and the other clients have all taught me kind of amazing things. I mean, there's been clients that I've like learned who are doing incredible democratic work in India. And like, yeah. I, I just, I'm flabbergasted and you know, have really enjoyed the time on the calls because I feel like I'm getting a broader sense of the world and there's so many people in different time zones. <laughs> so um, it's, it's really fascinating to see people from different walks of life and then see where they hope to make a difference in the world through their graduate school process. Yes. Wonderful. So how did you and your partner celebrate or how will you two celebrate? Um, well, we popped a bottle of champagne that I had had saved for three years and had a Popeye's chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So champagne and Popeye's. <laughs> but that's the perfect so That's amazing. Um, yeah. And we shared it with my grandmother. And so it was a, it was a great celebration. And I went out with some friends and I'll probably be celebrating for a couple more months <laughs> until yes. graduate school starts. And I think at this point, I'm just, I'm so, ugh, like, the best thing is just to know, like, I mean, I, it's the end of February, and I know what my life is going to look like, so I can start that's, planning it. That's and that's exactly right. That's for me is huge, because I'm, I'm a planner, I need to have a plan. And so I'm yeah. already looking at housing and, um, and what I'll do afterwards and the opportunity to get potential seed funding for my nonprofit. So Good. Yeah, no, I mean, it's all happening. It's all, yeah. all happening. It's all happening. It is all happening, Brianna. And, you know, the, it's, this is the beginning of the rest of your life. It's crazy. If I, I, I mean, it's crazy for a single event to be like, oh, the rest of my life is going to be different after this. But like, it legitimately is going to be. And, and the thing is, is that I, 
can't wait to engage and meet everybody and like the community of people in the scholarship just seems outstanding and I don't know I just still feel like I'm I've won the lottery so <laughs> you did win the lottery and but you play you also put yourself in to be able to win it it was yeah so, I remember I remember yeah us talking through the tuition and you and uh, like we were moving stuff around yeah different accounts and yeah um I remember that it we was were, a struggle it was like it was hard can you show it was like <laughs> we pulled it I just pulled it together barely <laughs> but you were amazing to work with and I just I knew that you knew what I was sacrificing to participate and um and like I just I pulled it together like I just just barely pulled it together and but it was worth it. Like I, and there was almost a moment where I didn't because I was like, I don't know that I can do this. Right. And, and that's really scary, but I trusted you. Like I trusted you and I trusted what you were doing. And, you know, there's so many people out there who are looking to sometimes like take advantage of people in my circumstance or something like that. And your, you, it was just instantly clear that you were not that person and your company was not that place. And yeah. so I, I believed in the service and I, I had to convince some people around me that it was worth it. You know, they were like, yeah, well, I'm sure they you were crazy. a little bit. Yeah. I felt a little vindicated when I got in last week. Cause I was like, see, I told you. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Probably, I'm sure. They thought you were crazy. I'm, my friends think I'm crazy. They, yeah. they, they cannot believe that I, the amount of money that I ask people to pay in tuition but they also still refer people to me because they know we, we get people results. Um, yeah. I think that the thing that people need to think about is, and I, I think I heard you say this, like in comparison to how much you're about to spend on graduate school, it is nothing. Like, I mean, it doesn't matter what graduate school you're applying to. Like, even if you get, a, you know, even if you think you can get a great scholarship on your own, like you're only the likelihood is that the investment is going to at the very least like be an equal return like at the at very the least very least and that doesn't even count the trajectory of your no. career yeah. or even just the difference between getting into a good school yeah. on your own or a great school or like, for me it just was like it, the investment was worth it just for my mental health. Like if I just like, if, if I just put a number on my mental health through the process, I was like, oh, it's more than the investment. So, you know, that for me was an easy, like cost benefit analysis. But then to think about, okay, well then after that, if I just get it back in scholarship, like that's worth it then because I had this process was so much easier for me. I had somebody in my corner. I had somebody I could go to with all my questions. I mean, I probably had like four to 500 questions in the last eight months, you know, Great. and like, it, like, that's a minimum number that you're going to have. You're going to have four to 500 questions that someone needs to answer. And instead of spending 17 hours on a blog, you can ask it to your Q and a like weekly calls. You can ask it to the monthly client calls. You can ask it to your consultant. You can ask it to another client. Like, I mean, just the amount of people that you have to access as a resource is is so gratifying and then and then to know that you're a hundred like there's a very strong chance that you're going to get it back in terms of a scholarship and then a much more likely chance that someone like you know me that you could potentially get a lot more money than what you were going to get on your own like oh I mean 13 times <laughs> more money than you were going to get on your own so if if you're nervous about it like I, you know, I just have to say, like, I was nervous about it. I was scared. This was probably the biggest investment that I've ever done in anything, like, outside of, like, assets, you know? And it was worth it because it's now changed my life. Mm-hmm. Yes. And one last, um, some last things I just want to say, some just sort of disclaimers is, like, when Brianna is saying her mental health, she doesn't mean that we did any sort of therapy or psych psycho anything together she means that her mental health was so much well taken care of because you had community guidance uh support like yeah. just to say that to be clear yeah yeah it can definitely. Be confusing since we have mindset coaches like oh yeah. do i do therapy like no, no. no. <laughs> um and then another thing is earlier you were talking about well someone's gonna get the money 
it, it should be you. And, and I always like to emphasize that my clients are not competing mm -hmm. primarily with everyone else applying. You are competing with a lesser expressed version of yourself. Of yourself, yep. Yeah. It's, and, and the way that you taught me to shift that in my mindset was huge because like even going into my interview at night, Hennessy, I mean, I was with the best of the best, like around me, like it could have been such an intimidating experience. Like I could have like retracted into my shell and been like, Oh no, I'm not as good as anybody around here. Like, you know, I'm never going to get it. Like, you know, the chances aren't good enough. Like there's, you know, only 1% of whatever people get it. And instead what you and my consultant taught me was like, I'm just competing against myself. Like I'm just competing against myself in my interview. I need to tell my story. Nobody can tell my story. Nobody is going to do what I'm going to do. And if they want that version of Brianna, great, you know, yay. If they don't want that version of Brianna, there's a better school that will find me, you know? So it, that confidence and that clarity, like the clarity to cut out the noise and to focus on the things that you can change and you can fix and you can tell a better story and you can write a better essay and you can take a better GRE, but you don't need to focus on anybody else's application process. You know, you can learn from it and you can get advice from it and you can get, you know, uh, a a good friendship from it but mm -hmm. ultimately you have to focus on yourself you have to focus on your work and your story and that's what the art of applying gave me was the confidence to go into that interview weekend and just say I got this because it's it's my story to tell that's exactly right and obviously you are in education so you are a strong writer already right? You probably strong interviewer already. Yeah. But what I feel like you're graduating from the application accelerator with is like the skill set, which you were saying earlier, of just how to interview, how to tell a story, how to concisely answer a question, mm -hmm. how to understand the question behind the question. Yeah, yeah. That was a huge thing. I remember working with my consultant being like, what does this essay question mean? And she was like, oh, Brianna, like, this is a really common question. You need to know this question. And so she would explain, there was like a lot of interpretation or like translating that like I didn't understand that she was instantly able to be like, this is a story question. This is a history question, or this is a, you know, whatever it was, like I started being able to recognize. Same thing with GRE testing. Like I was like, oh, this is this type of question or on this the essays. This type of question. And then yeah. but you can also do that on the essays. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, they said it differently. Mm -hmm. But it's the, the exact same thing. But it's the same question. Yeah. It's the same motive. It's the motivation behind the question is the same. Yeah. And I mean, and what that meant also, I mean, one of the reasons that the process ended up being so enjoyable, honestly, like applying to grad school was enjoyable was because working with my consultant, I was able to really hone in on like my materials, like make really strong material that, you know, I was able to in large part like reuse for different applications in right. different pieces. And I think I've heard you say this before. It's like, you know, you will legitimately apply to twice as many graduate schools if you want um, with, you know, half the stress that you would do it on your own because exactly right. your consultant will help you figure out like, okay, great. This is an awesome essay. Let's figure out how to, you know, take this and, you know, use it for the next school. And I mean, everybody is going to do that, but doing it well and still That's then right. pulling out the pieces that you need to attach to that specific school that you need to address in that specific essay. Like that is a skill. And that was not a skill I had. <laughs> and my consultant helped give me that skill. Good. Oh, beautiful. Well, this has been a pleasure. You're an amazing interviewee. You're going to be an amazing Stanford student. You're going to make such a huge impact in the world. So well-deserved. I just want you to go out, change the world, enjoy your life, celebrate it, walk on the clouds, all of it, <laughs> and tell, you know, tell everybody. Tell I everybody will. about your experience with the art of applying. If you hear of someone who's having trouble, you know, I don't need you to be a salesperson for me. Just say, yeah. hey, this is who helped me. And they yeah. may be able to help you too. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's been the best investment that I've ever made in my career and my professional life. Um, and so I would 
highly recommend it and will do so to everybody I know. So. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Brianna. And congratulations again. Thank you, Kanisha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching our video. For more videos just like this, make sure you click subscribe. And if you want to work with us on your graduate school applications, visit us at theartofapplying.com or click on the link below in the description.